This is what the Russian world, or the Russian peace, as they called it, looks like. On December 7, 2022, the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called for the establishment of the International Special Tribunal for the crime of aggression committed by Russia against Ukraine. He called the crime of aggression the alpha and omega of the war. He said that to start a criminal and unprovoked war was to open the door to thousands of crimes committed during hostilities at the occupied territory. Who gave the order to start the criminal war and who organized the terror? asked Zelensky. He said that Ukraine appeals to the United States of America to support the efforts in establishing the special tribunal for the crime of aggression. He asked to support the steps to support the power of universally recognized international law. His team continued with an effort. On December 19th, in the office of president in Kyiv, at a press conference, the team members gave an update on the special tribunal status. Whenever we talk about war crimes and crimes against humanity, it is very important to investigate and prosecute them, either on national level or on international level. But we do understand that investigation and prosecution of this crime might end on the low level and mid level perpetrators. And the linkage between the particular war crime in Bucha and the guy who sits in Kremlin or Luganka, this linkage might be very hard to be established. So that is why crime of aggression is an element which is not there now, but which should be there for us to be able to tackle not only low-level and mid-level perpetrators, but those who are on top of the tree. The very idea of the establishing of the special tribunal is uh, not to have impunity and to have, how we call it, comprehensive accountability. That is, for each crime, the perpetrator of this crime is being prosecuted and taken to justice. And we see that without investigation and prosecution of the crime of aggression against Ukraine, impunity might remain. And we see this since 2014. So we do not invent this this thesis. We see this. Uh, We work uh, inside the United Nations to have the understanding from the United Nations, in particular General Assembly, that there must be accountability for the crime of aggression against Ukraine, that this crime of aggression should not be unpunished, and that some new special mechanism should be established in order to uh, investigate and prosecute uh, this uh, crime of aggression against Ukraine. When the war began, we spoke about Bucha, Enerpin, and we saw the corpse. Now in TVs, we speak mainly about a battle between two armies. New tanks are coming, new missiles are coming, new guns are coming, like an army against an army. Today, if you put us the TV, you say, the last missile falling here, this missile was from Iran, blah, blah. Finished, story finished. Now, America is giving new tanks, and Germany is refusing new tanks. So, we are in a military story. (coughs) But it's not the battle of Valmy here. It's not the battle of Stalingrad. There is also a battle of the secret service of Russia and we have decided to go on investigating about the torture. Why the torture? Macron will not change his mind to negotiate with Putin, except if public opinion tells him you have to act because they are actually torturing the civilian, they are torturing the the population in a completely unacceptable way in Europe. I just come back from Kherson. We were in Kherson and we interviewed four people who have been tortured. Basic people who have been tortured to be completely destroyed. We, talk, we interview them in the place of torture. We interview after people who have been tortured but from upscale society of Kherson. 
people who have been deported after to Crimea, put in jail until one target. We stop torture if you are pro-Russian. So we will go on in this investigation because in this aggression you are speaking of, there is an aggression from the army, but there is also an, an aggression of the secret service of Russia against the population of Ukraine with a special methodology. I will give you only one example. We interviewed a guy, he was from administration of Kherson. He was arrested. He was tortured one time per week. But suddenly they saw the injection. And they say, if you lose conscience, we'll use this first injection. If you lose second time conscience, we'll use this second injection, etc." So we understood, and he understood very quickly, it was special secret service from Moscow. It was not a poor guy from Pol Russian police was making the torture. In the news, we don't say the secret service of Russia have a strategy against Ukraine today, a practical strategy. At the moment, the Russians divulgate their real face. No more public topic from Putin, no more public uh, topic from Lavrov, but real question from the guy who, who torture, and always the same target. We stop torture if you work for us. So it's a very special strategy, and we must unmask this strategy. If you want, we recognize the crime of aggression, we must name the real different faces of aggression. There was Butcha. There is actually what happens every day that you receive missile and that. But there is also a very structured war of the FSB on the population of Ukraine. And imagine in Kherson, it was Russia. Officially from Mr. Putin, they voted to be Russian. And you torture the, civil, the civilian to be pro-Russian. So we have to emphasize, I would say, the different faces of this aggression. The battle of public opinion is the key of the battle for this crime. Not only a justice battle. in Zabriskie and I can't agree with you more because I've been doing all the work going to torture chambers in liberated Kharkov Oblast and Kherson and I've seen the same I've been interviewing uh, about a dozen of people who survived tortures and so my question about the pattern that you have mentioned if you um, look at the number of these reports you see that the Russians have a certain procedure so they do the injection at a certain time they use the certain tools uh, like a telephone which they used first during Chechnya war and so forth so my question is do you think it's possible to obtain in writing hopefully or maybe just a verbal order that is coming from the military leadership in Russia, because it seems to me that that would be a perfect evidence for the special tribunal and also would be the tool uh, to help the public opinion, to help the diplomats and the politicians to proceed. For that, I think, and uh, my organization, Yarad, will work in that direction. We must really analyze the strategy of the FSB and divulgate their pattern of strategy to Ukraine because people think it's only an attack of the army. It's not an attack of FSB. And your torture is one of the work of FSB in a very technical way. And if you divulgate that, many people will be with you. Many people will be with you because FSB has not so many friends in the planet. Not so many friends. So it would need a strong, strong study of different cases. Uh, I, I remember this man we interviewed and was sent in Crimea for five months, one torture per week only, every time at the end of the torture, now are you agree to work for us? So we have to, I would say, unmask what they are doing to try to turn your people to be pro-Russia by a very sophisticated way. This is a very important question. And this is one of the reasons why we believe that this crime of aggression is a tool which leads us directly to the top of the tree. Because whenever we talk about that written instructions or orders, we will practically for sure will not find that instructions and orders from top five, top six, top seven people in Russia. Because this is not only about Putin. This is also about those who had FSB, those who had all the other services. And though whether we might have this instruction to rape kids in Bucha, but whereas 
we might need years to establish this linkage with no uh, surety concerning the result. The crime of aggression, I mean, they were all there in the room, sitting on the meetings of the Russian uh, Defense and Security Council, uh, strategizing and uh, having the decision to start this so-called special military operation. So this is one of the tools how we can get there. And I think that they are really worried about this because they feel that this is something what can bring us to top five, top 10, maybe top 20. And this is, this is also the reason why we are doing this. The world currently has several options regarding how it can bring Putin and his circle to justice for the crimes of aggression. Fundamental crimes of aggression, which if they didn't happen, then all of these other crimes wouldn't have happened. War crimes and genocide and crimes against humanity. And despite the fact that international law has within it moments which are welcomed by the National Security Council of the United Nations, which defines what is exactly crimes of aggression, it qualifies what exactly is um, this aggression, opening both sides of subjective and objective. And over the last 70 or 80 years, in the history of the world, the world has not known one case where someone who has committed crimes of aggression has been brought to justice. The world really has fallen asleep at the wheel and in most recent times doesn't even woke up to this realization and the doctrine of international law has been hidden far, far away. The world calmly observed all of the criminal war aggressions that Russia waged on Georgia in 2008 and in regards to Ukraine as well in 2014 when these war, war crimes and aggression impacted on Crimea and eastern Ukraine. We could sit here for a long time and remind ourselves of many cases where there is no country in the world which has received anything useful except the aggressor from this and there hasn't been any kind of punishment ever. We have analysed all the available measures and options as to how we can bring to justice those at the highest of power of the Russian Federation. We even consider the risk of the um, United Nations and how it accepts uh, decisions and makes decisions from those reasons, as you very well know, because Russia has the right to veto. And actually, Russia can mm, block the Security Council from taking any new decisions. Of course, we very carefully researched all of the information of uh, international jurisdiction. And it was obvious, so we came to the conclusion that because this court has a very unique jurisdiction on bringing to justice war crimes, such as the following, if a country has taken part in international criminal court ratified by the ratified by the Roman treaties, then it renders the international court hopeless in in investigating war crimes. And in order to be convinced in this, all you need to do is look into open source intelligence. And you can see that over the eight months of war, there has not been one arrest for an involvement in any of the war crimes. And it's logical because there can't be because nor Ukraine or the aggressor country. And even if Ukraine were to do this, then let's be realistic. We all know that Russia would never do this. We won't even consider the uh, sovereign immunity of Putin. In order to rid the world of this available mechanism of bringing to justice those who are involved in war crimes. We have studied all the historical cases in how to create similar tribunals. We have even consulted with many international lawyers from various countries, from the US, from the UK, from many, many countries of the world. And we have come to one straightforward conclusion that, and that is the world requires a political mechanism, a legitimate an internationally recognized mechanism capable of bringing to justice war crimes. After numerous conversations with expert lawyers, quite often it was brought up that perhaps the world needs a, a constantly active and working tribunal 
which is working always, considering all these cases. But I actually don't think the world right now is ready for this. We are speaking now with all of you about creating a tribunal with a very small mandate. A mandate of investigating war crimes. In fact, in a judicial sense, it is brought forward very, very simply. It wouldn't touch any of these really difficult to prove topics like genocide and war crimes which obviously needs lots of experts and lots of patients. But all of the evidence of bringing Putin to justice and his close allies has already been collected by the appropriate departments in Ukraine and have been collected by the um, according uh, organs of our international partners, partners in Europe and overseas. And the only thing that we haven't got enough of now in this uh, civilized world is the only thing that we need to understand is the issue that in order to create a special tribunal, it isn't really an issue just dependent on the war in Ukraine, but it's for the future of the further living of the civilized world and guarantees of safety. Because if we don't take into consideration right now to stop those specific people who are undertaking war crimes, and I've spoke about this many times in our meeting, that tomorrow these dictators will wake up tomorrow with new wishes of taking new territory. And going back to what I started with, it is a great regret that there are countries which only generate aggression.